In this video, I'll show you how to add dust in Blender. First, we look at creating the base dust texture and constrain it to where it would actually appear. Then we move on to adding more detail. And finally, look at how to make these floating dust particles in the air. First, the base dust. For this, add in three noise textures and set the scale of the top one to 5000. For the second, we'll want to set it to 10. And for the final one, we'll have to set it to 50. This one requires a little bit more care. So you'll have to set the detail to 10 and the roughness to 0.7. Now, if you multiply them all together, you can already see a base dust pattern emerge. This is way too dark though, so multiply it by 3 to correct the brightness. Two more things about the base dust. First, we'll want to use object coordinates. And second, to tweak the contrast, add a math note, set it to power and tweak the exponent. I found 1.5 to look great for small areas like this, but when covering larger ones, this along with the scale are the values to tweak to break up that repetition that might appear. By the way, if you don't want to create this node setup yourself, then it is available on my Gumroad. Link in description. Alright, now onto the dust detail. And this is made up of two parts. First, these little granules. And second, these little hair thingies. So for the granules, take this noise texture from the base dust and pass it through a math node set to greater than. Then to stop them from melting together like this, you'll want to set the threshold to 0.6. And that's the granules done. So onto the long and squiggly particles. First, the Musgrave and a wave texture, connect them to the object coordinates and give them these settings here. Now pass the Musgrave through a less than with a threshold of minus 0.29 and multiply that with the wave texture that should be passed through a less than as well. But this time with a threshold of 0.02. Lastly, at the granules onto the squiggly dust and that's the detail done. So now let's incorporate it with the base dust. To do that, multiply the base with 0.8 and add the dust detail on top. Now let's move on to restricting the dust to where it would actually appear and incorporating it into the shader. So dust builds up on top of objects. So to do that, add a geometry node and plug the normal output into a separate XYZ. Now if you view the Z, it basically gives you a top mask. So exactly what we want. Then just multiply the dust texture with it and that makes the dust appear only on top. Now, the next thing I'm about to do to this mask won't be beneficial in all situations. So be prepared to turn it off if you need to, because I want to remove dust from the places where there's ambient occlusion to hopefully keep it away from places where other objects are preventing it from reaching the surface. And now you can see why that might be a problem sometimes, since there are cases where dust will actually only be in those places. But to actually do it, just add an ambient occlusion node and tweak the contrast like this. Then just multiply it with the dust texture and that's done. So now we can move on to incorporating the dust into the shader. First, using the dust texture, mix the dusty color into the diffuse. Then makes in a roughness of one, transmission of zero, you know, just make the dust 100% matte and non-reflective. The last touch I'd like to make is to add some bump. So I'll add a bump node, reduce the strength and finally plug the dust texture into the height. And that looks great. So now we can move on to the floating dust particles in the air. To make them, just add in a plane and give it a shader like this. For extra points, you can match the color of the floating dust to the resting one. Now add in a cube, scale it so it covers the area you want dust particles in and give it a transparent material. Also, you'll have to disable shadow visibility or else it will remove all the dust. Then create a particle system, give it like 60,000 particles and increase the lifetime. Afterwards in the source section, set the emit from to volume and the distribution to random. Now we can already see some particles floating around. So next, check rotation and set the orientation axis to global Z. This will make it easier to get the planes to face the camera later down the line. Now speaking of, select the plane as the instance object, set the scale randomness to 0.5 and the scale to the lowest it goes. Then check object rotation. Okay. Almost done, just a couple more things. First, rotate the plane so it's standing up like this. And to make them face the camera, adjust the face in the rotation section until they do. Great. Now, I found that they should be about 1.2 centimeters high. So scale the plane until they are that size, which it's actually pretty big for dust particles. If you want the dust to kind of float down like this, then just go to the velocity section and turn the normal to zero. Afterwards, you'll also want to reduce the time step in the physics section to something really, really low. Last thing, for the best results, I recommend having depth of field turned on in the camera. But now that's it. You should now have some good looking dust buildup on your surfaces and some floating dust in the air. So if this video helped you at all, then please consider subscribing or check out this video next.